Hey everyone, Korzik here. Welcome to another bonus episode of Let's Play East 1 and 2 Chronicles Plus for the PC. In the third episode, I explored the mines and found the third book of East down there, and I also gained entry into Darm Tower. So that's what this bonus episode will cover, events you can do throughout the mine all the way up until entering the tower. Uh, before I get into that stuff though, I want to show off something that I forgot to do in the second bonus episode. So in this file here, I have found the Book of East from the Shrine already. However, I have not, I have not returned to Sarah yet. So if you want to, you can visit Jebba first and show her the Book of East. She says, the wheel of fate has begun turning again. And then we're shooed off to Sarah. So, to get this dialogue from Jebba, you can't have learned of Sarah's murder yet. You need to have done this right after finding the Book of East from the Shrine, but before you learn of Sarah's murder. If you already learned of Sarah's murder, then that stuff takes priority, and you don't get to see this dialogue. Another thing I want to mention is, on this close-up screen here, we can speak with Jebba and Fina, obviously. However, if you touch Fina's sprite instead, you get this close-up portrait. And in this case, she actually says something different than what she says on the other screen. Now. When Fina's back inside later, after you talk with her on the pier, in that case she says the same thing no matter which way you talk to her, but here she has something new to say. Jeb is letting her stay here as long as she needs to, and she would like it if we came and visited from time to time. So that's just the game's way of telling you to make sure to check in on Fina and Jebba every so often. Okay, with that out of the way, I will load up this file here. This file here has already explored the mine a little bit. I have found the Rota Tree Seed already, and I have also found Rhea's Harmonica. I have eaten the Rota Tree Seed already, so I am able to speak with the Rota Trees, but uh, because I have not returned Rhea's Harmonica, the trees will now say something different. So let's check that out. This tree here, by the way, is the one west of the mine. So, it might not be clear, but uh, the trees are actually asleep at this point. They're speaking in fragments, and yeah, they are asleep, and they awaken once Rhea has her harmonica back, once she plays that little tune on it, and then they speak more coherently. Anyways, let's see what the southern rota tree has to say. Normally, we would get the silver sword from this tree, However, because we have not returned the Silver Harmonica to Rhea, we will instead get a different scene. So there, the game kind of tries to disguise just exactly what's being said. Uh, the fragmented bits are Black Pearl and Claria, and also Despair, but you could probably figure that one out for yourself. Uh, anyways, if you want to, this little passage up here, if you follow that, there is this locked chest over here. It contains the greatest treasure in the game, a piece of paper. 
Uh, all joking aside though, the piece of paper is written in an unreadable language. Now you might think that uh, you could take it to Jeva and have her translate it like you do with the books East. However, you would be wrong. This piece of paper actually belongs to Rhea. And it is a poem. So let's go give that to her. Now before you can give Rhea the piece of paper, you do need to return the harmonica to her first. So let's go do that. I will just skip all of that dialogue. It's nothing new. And I guess I could skip this game, this scene, but there's really not much point. The game still makes you sit through the tune anyways. Anyways, in order to give the piece of paper to Rhea, uh, for some reason you can't just talk to her with it equipped. You have to, you do have to have it equipped, but you need to stand right next to her and then press the use button. So, she says this is something that she wrote long ago. We give it to her. However, she's not going to tell us what it says. So, just leave the screen. And when you do, she reads it in private. And by the way, we will get this cool view of Baggy Bedad off in the distance there. So that's pretty neat. So it seems like uh, Rhea has had some sorrowful stuff happen to her in the past that she's kind of lamenting over, but there is still hope, so. And then, she mentions Fina. So that's rather curious. She mentions the Wheel of Fate again, too. Even if she alone were to awaken to her destiny, she wishes the dream could have continued forever for Fina. So, maybe Rhea here knows something about Fina's past. But whatever that past is, it seems rather sad for them both. Uh, if you want to, you can actually speak with Rhea. Uh, she does make this curious comment about Baggy Bedad. Baggy Bedad is the crater off in the distance there. She says that anytime she sees that horrible scar, it breaks her heart. So, sounds to me like she may know something about that. Why the crater's there in the first place. In any event, uh, since we gave the harmonica back to Rhea, both of the Rota trees are awake now, so I will head to the western Rota tree. Uh, heading to the southern Rota tree, of course, gets you the silver sword, and nothing new there. But I did not show off what the western tree says after it awakens. So let's go do that. West of the mine over here and on the top left of this screen the road tree is right here
so it would seem that the goddesses created the Rota trees long ago. And also this scene serves as a hint to tell you where to find the Silver Sword to go and visit his brother. Uh, you only get that part of the dialogue if you don't have it yet. If you already have the Silver Sword, then that dialogue will be omitted. Anyways, let's load up this file. In this file, I have found the Book of East within the mine. If you recall, Sarah told us the first one we should find from the shrine. However, with full knowledge of the game, then you know there's a Book of East in the mine, so... I have gotten that first, so... What might happen if we try to show this one to Sarah? Sarah! We can't see her off to the side here. Because we can't get back there. So... Yeah, you can see that Sarah is actually still alive, rather curiously. Now, when you get the Book of East from the Shrine, that is the trigger for Sarah's murder to have occurred. But when you get the Book of East from the mine first, then Sarah is actually still alive. So, pretty interesting. Unfortunately, we can't explore the back part of her home until Sarah's dead. So we can't actually show this Book of East to her. I do wonder what she'd say about it, but no such luck, unfortunately. Next, this file. I've already explored the mine, found all the silver equipment, and if you remember, this kid here says that his grandpa was telling him what he believed to be an Asterian fairy tale regarding the silver sword being used to defeat the monsters long ago. So, if you show it to him, he has this dialogue here. Yep, sure is. Yep. You can also show the silver sword to the weapons dealer. I believe you need it equipped in order for him to comment on it. A great power. Uh, if for some reason you want to buy the tower from the weapons dealer, then you will need to have the silver sword unequipped. Because with the silver sword equipped, he will never mention that the tower is back in stock. He'll just make those comments about the silver sword instead. So if you want to buy the tower for, from him for whatever reason, then yeah, make sure not to have the silver sword equipped. Anyways, we also found the silver armor in the mine. Let's show it to the armor dealer. Uh, I showed it off last episode, but uh, in the last bonus episode, I mean. But if you want to, you can also show him the silver shield. However, uh, when you have both the silver armor and the silver shield equipped, then he only comments on the armor. So if you want to see the dialogue referring to the silver shield, you need to unequip the silver armor first. It's kind of dumb, but what can you do? Uh, if you remember, Pim commented on, on the silver armor. He said that's it had been stolen from a store, supposedly. So, let's see what he has to say about it. Hmm, I think I've seen it somewhere before. But nothing like that's ever been stolen from here. So, <laughs> he's obviously a two-faced liar. The silver armor never belonged to him in the first place. 
talk to him again, he mentions his surprise about us surviving down in the mine. Uh, a couple NPCs comment on that, actually, but nothing really of importance that they say. Okay, next, this file. This file, I have already uh, done what I needed to to enter Darm Tower. Jebba sent me off to Gobon already. Uh, but if you want to, you can choose to inform Sloth that you're heading to Darm Tower. Uh, before that, though, these pickards off to the side here. If you remember, at the beginning of the game, there was only two or three of them in the pen. And now there is quite a few more. So, the way that works is, initially, uh, there can be anywhere from two to four pickards, I believe. And as you level up, uh, one pickard gets added to the pen for each level. Uh, it can vary how many pickards there are exactly, but uh, at level 10, I believe there is a maximum of 13. Maybe 14, but I can't remember for certain. So that's rather curious that they continue breeding throughout the whole game. Anyways, let's go talk with Sloth. We are heading to Darm Tower. Uh, something to mention is that uh, if you have not gotten the free tower from Sloth, then that's that free tower scene will override you mentioning going into Darm Tower. So if you really want to see that scene, then be sure that you have purchased the tower first, which is what I have done in this file. And speaking of that free tower scene, I learned that there is actually two sets of dialogue for that. Um, the first one is if you talk to Sloth after you rescue Fina, but before you finish the shrine, there's some dialogue about Adol looking really drained from his fight with the monsters. Uh, if you talk to Sloth after learning of Sarah's murder, though, Adol will mention the shrine and also mention his quest to find the books of East. So, kind of kind of unusual that Adol has two different sets of descriptive texts that he can relay to Ad to Sloth. But yeah, pretty interesting, I suppose. Next, this file here we have uh, been sent. To Gobon by Jebba to enter Darm Tower. However, I am missing the silver armor. But let's talk with Gobon anyway, see what he says. I probably won't be a match for the monsters in there with my equipment. And then he mentions this about Sarah and the legendary brave soul. Maybe she didn't get it right after all. If you want to, you can try to convince him again. However, he's like, nope, just save us both the trouble. You are not getting in there. Now he does say that the monsters in there are far too tough for us, however, to even get this dialogue from him, you need to have defeated Vigolian, the bat boss in the mine, without the full set of silver equipment. On Nightmare, that is no easy task. However, apparently that's still not enough to convince him. 
says, nope, they're still too tough for you. You won't stand a chance. So he doesn't mention the silver equipment specifically in this case. However, he does basically indicate that your equipment is not good enough. And so if you do not have the full set of silver equipment, then that is your cue to go and find the rest of it and then speak to him again. Okay, next I am going to head to Zepic Village because there is an NPC there who normally doesn't say much of anything. He is usually asleep. However, by the time Jeva sends you off to Gobon to enter Darn Tower, he will actually say something. This, I believe, is the only time that he ever does. This guy here on the pier that's fishing, he says, fish from the heavens. I don't know if this is uh, an accurate translation or not. I don't believe it is because, well, Falcom is rather notorious for their bad English. So in the Japanese version of this game, for instance, uh, the heal potion, uh, it is romanized as heal portion. And in East 2, there is a dungeon called the Shrine of Solomon. However, Falcom romanized it as the Shrine of Salmon. So, <laughs> this comment here, I believe, refers to that really, really botched uh, romanization fish from the heavens. Anyways, this is the only time he will ever speak. Any other time, he'll just be like, Zzz, not say anything. So that's pretty cool that he does actually speak, but you probably won't ever find that out on your own. Okay, lastly, this file here, we are ready to enter Darm Tower, and this time, I've also got a wing with me. I am totally prepared. So let's go talk to Gobon. All right, let's go. Hold on, that wing you're carrying there? Nope, he's not going to let us keep it. Apparently, Darm Tower is encased in a powerful magical barrier. So if we were to try and use the wing inside Darm Tower, we would just get sucked into the tower walls and be killed instantly. So, Gobon's going to hold on to it for us. Now, to be honest, I think that little dialogue there is just the, the developer's way of saying that uh, there is a bug when you try to use the wing inside the tower. Because, if you remember, Gobon said that you would just be sucked inside the walls. I think that's probably code for uh, the wing accidentally warps you out of bounds and you can't get out. Or it could be that you try to use the wing in the tower and the game crashes or something like that. Or maybe you use the wing and it works just fine, but Gobon won't let you back into the tower or something like that. Either way, I think it's kind of odd that they single it out, that they specifically don't want you having a wing, but yeah, that's the case. And you get it taken away from you. In any event, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.